Hello and welcome to uh, part 9 of my blind run. Although uh, something happened with the commentary uh, audio file. So essentially the footage you see is sort of blind. With a few failed attempts edited out. <coughs> but uh, yeah, the commentary is post, but it's just for this part. I did also have a slight delay. Apparently the uh, Zeti are based off Oni, which yeah, is just like uh, Eastern Demons. And yep, that's all I have to say about them. I have completed this game and I, I find the story just... It's got lots of elements, but I don't think anything is really explained properly or it's not really explored. Like the Zeti. Uh, I get it, they're, I get it, they're aliens that can, can uh, control robots. But other than that, it's not really expressed how, you know, where they exactly came from. How did they get here? Apparently, apparently there's an Archie comic which uh, tells the backstory, which I suppose is a good thing. And also, the Wisps are never explained either. Now, as for the gameplay, I, uh, after completing the blind run, well, while playing the blind run, I found it quite infuriating <laughs> at some points because it can be quite difficult. But once you replay a level, you'll find that you actually enjoy the, the gameplay a lot more. So, when it comes to Sonic Lost World, I think the biggest problem is it's just not the first time round you're going to struggle. But once you get used to the levels, it becomes a lot more fun. Now, granted, uh, the, the argument that you have to get used to it. It could, it could be argued that's not a legitimate legitimate excuse for a game. Which I can see what you mean. Uh, now these things here, uh, yeah, very much like Skulltalus from Legend of Zelda. But anyway, uh, this level is fine. Really fun, really uh, bouncy and jungly. Um, particularly the thing is with the background in this game, the, the, of the levels, is I think they do look a bit bland. With the exception of uh, this level and maybe a few others. Yeah, the mud kills you. <laughs> but uh, I was going to say, this level, however, it, it's really busy. The backgrounds are really dense, full of like lots of trees, uh, obviously. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it does go some mushroom hills, though. Eagle Wisp. The Eagle Wisp, uh, which I'm about to show off now, yeah, she sort of steered with the gamepad. And the controls are alright, so I guess it would be better with an analog stick. And yeah, I'll, mi I'll miss out on that one. Thank you. Yeah, I think you have to kick the red flowers, can't be sure. Like I said, I replayed this level uh, yesterday, and <laughs> lovely. But uh, I replayed this level the other day, and I just ran through it and, I'd, and actually enjoyed it. So surprising enough, maybe a blind run isn't the best rep representation of this game. Gold cannon time. Oh, m my bad. I wonder if I'm actually in danger of getting a game over at this point. Wonderful performance. And the thing is with the spin dash, which I haven't really explained, I guess it is useful, but... Say if you were to spin dash and do a jump, you wouldn't do like a super long jump. So, you know, the spin dash jump isn't a way of getting momentum. In fact, again, I keep saying this, uh, this game doesn't really have momentum based physics as such. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a hit and a hit and a miss. Like it doesn't seem to flow like, say, the, the Sonic Adventure games did. But at the same time, you do. It's more precise. So make of that what you will.
Oh, nearly. As for running on these sort of slender tubes, I, to be honest, I feel like you don't have enough, you can't see where you're going too well. Ooh, corkscrew. Uh, now, of course, when it comes to these, uh, these butterflies, the first thing that came to mind was the silver stars from Mario. I keep bringing up Mario doing this playthrough, but he really is. Like, people called uh, Sonic Colors a ripoff of uh, Mario Galaxy, which it wasn't. It wasn't. It had similarities, but it felt completely different. And this one does too, and I, and I don't just mean the game, but I mean, I mean just the attitude. Like, the art style, it's just generic level themes. It's cartoony. The, the uh, you know, it's uh, the bosses. They're at the end of levels, rather than being a separate level, in, like in most of the Sonic games. Well, the the 3D games, the bosses tend to be they consider their own separate level. But uh, yeah, in this one, it's you have to go for a level and fight the boss. It's such a yeah, definitely, definitely Mario attitude to it. Yeah. Yeah, okay then. Yeah, and actually it didn't really look it, but uh, that level was quite enjoyable. Uh, when you play it for the second time, of course. Uh, that's the second time you've screwed him over, Sonic. Well, I just realised there isn't a payoff for that at the end of the story. Drama. I actually do like this uh, moment here, but it'd be good if it was explored. Like I said, it's not really... Uh, the, fact, the, fact, the fact that he wasn't fast enough, it's, it's not really brought, me brought up or mentioned again. Like, for example, the whole Sonic and Tails thing we saw there. Okay, the first time we didn't listen to Tails, and he lost the shell off Eggman. Uh, the, the, oh, and the second time we didn't listen to Tails, he just got captured. Well, got, got Tails captured. But there's no payoff. There's, like, there's no moment at the end where Sonic has to listen to Tails, and he saves the day. They just make up, and it's all over with. It's the same with like, the Eggman-Sonic relationship. It's mentioned, but it's not really explored too much. And the Zeta, yeah, we get to know their personalities, but we don't know too much about them as well. It's like, nothing's wrong with the story elements. They introduce them, but then they just don't really do much with them. And by the way, I don't know what happens to the Zeta. Because once you defeat them for the final time, that's it, they're just gone. And, and Are they dead? Oh, this one has great music. It's very, it's sort of like a waltz. Uh, now, this level took me quite a while uh, to get past. And it's essentially a uh, a stealth section. Yep, a stealth section in a Sonic game. And the thing is, it's not really that bad in terms of stealth because essentially you're just dodging a torch. So, yeah. So if a stealth section in a Sonic game comes to just running away from a torch, that actually isn't too bad. Because uh, stealth, the only problem with stealth is where you have to stop and start, which doesn't really suit a Sonic game. So the speed of the stealth section isn't really an issue, but it's the fact that if you get spotted, it's an instant death. Now the the, the uh, rhythm wisp here, uh, you activate it by tapping on the gamepad, and it's the most annoying uh, wisp I've ever played. And you'll see why in a moment, because it took me ages to figure out how to do this, but you'll see coming up. Because these are uh, little bouncy mushrooms things, <laughs> again from Mushroom Hill Zone. You know, when it comes to looks, I think the Sun Forest is the best looking zone in the game. That's probably because the others look a bit bland, if I'm honest. And this one this one at least has stuff in the background, which aren't just a skybox. 
Uh, now, I guess you're supposed to tap this in rhythm, but I never do, and you just, I just tap it as it comes along. And it works out fine. Of course, the slices are back, of course, these look very uh, cartoonish. And of course, again, the dragonflies, again, from Mushroom Hill Zone. It's very apt considering this is the forest. Of course, uh, the, the, the member of the, the member of the Deadly Six of fighting name is Zor. I think he's one of the he has some of the better lines out of all the Deadly Six members. He's sort of uh, emo when depressing and hilarious. Now, you just saw that sort of movement when he moves upwards, the Riven Wisp. I figured it had the best way to handle the Riven Wisp when, when obviously you don't have notes to click on. And that's to, like, uh, find the area you want to land on. And don't click on it, click above it. Because then the, the Riven Wisp will quickly, will quickly move upwards and then fall down. And this is the said self, the, uh, stealth section. And I found this to be the most difficult part coming up, and uh, I think you'll see why. Because the torch follows you really quickly, so you have to be really careful with it. Uh, and you see what I, do, what, I, what I'm doing here is oh, I'm clicking the uh, target far above those green platforms, so it falls down. This section here I'm not too crazy about. Again, you have to be quick. Yeah, so I guess on the broad side, this is a good way to handle a stealth section in a Sonic game. Not making it about like stopping and starting, but making it about like dodging a light. Just give up, Sonic. It's what I do. As a matter of fact, I've already pretty much given up on hope, happiness, success. Not to think of it, what am I still doing here? Actually, that's a good point, Zor. What are, what are you doing here? How are you related to the other members of the Deadly Six? I mean, we know Zik is the master of Zafik, but... Were they all in the same yoga class and got kidnapped or something? Uh, because, like, Zoran's a big stupid guy, uh, Xena's a bimbo, and Zor's this emo guy, and Zaz is just a maniac. Uh, what relation are they to each other? Besides being Zeti, of course. Uh, this boss here, quite annoying, but uh, you just kick the balls back to him. Uh, you know, it's lucky that Owl isn't using his instant death uh, beams here. And uh, when it comes to doing the kick on these uh, missiles, I'm not sure when they're going to activate. You can see sometimes they want to do it, sometimes they don't. Oh, come on. Huh. This feels like it should have been over by now. <laughs> you can see I'm doing the boats boat instead of kicking the balls here. And uh, let's finally finish off this guy. Anyway. Yeah, well, that's something to be depressed about. Anyway, with that act done, we've done the first part of Silent Forest, and uh, in the next part, it'll be, it'll be definitely more of a blind live commentary run, definitely. Huh. A nice cavern. At least they're mixing up the level themes, I guess. A uh, two player race, I'm not trying that. I wonder if it's online. But anyway, bye bye.